Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner. My name's Angela. I'm an artist best known for adult colouring books but I just love to draw and I'm particularly interested in drawing things in quite a stylized, whimsical kind of way. But I've had a request from one of you lovely people whose name escapes me because I forgot to write it down after I read your message and I know I haven't replied. I did reply actually about if I can show how or deconstruct drawings like shells and birds and other things so that you have a place to start with. How do you, how do I approach simplifying or drawing things like this? The simplifying of them is the hardest thing for me. I've, I've printed out some pictures here of shells and I'll use these to explain and then I'll, I'll do to explain what I mean. When I look at these, I can feel overwhelmed with the amount of detail in each image, with the patterns that I need to put in, with the entirety of the task. You know, it's, you know, where do you start is sometimes how I feel about things. Sometimes, <laughs> not so much now. The same here is, this is a weird shape. How do I draw that? Well, oh my gosh, they've got so much pattern and stuff in them. How can I do this? Not the best picture. It's quite pixelated, but it'll do. And the answer is you start by breaking things down. I first look at the overall shape. I have a pen. I have paper. I need some glasses so I can see clearly what I'm doing. Sorry, I had to turn away behind me to find my glasses. So, if I take this shell here, we've drawn these, we've drawn these ones. I've done these in a previous video. Here is my outline shape. Now, yes, I'm using photographs. But the idea is the same for a, an object in front of you. First thing that needs to be done is to look at that outer shape. What shapes are we going to draw? Well, that's my first shape. So essentially, I'm going to be drawing this for this part and then that kind of shape around here. And then if I'm using a pencil, I can go in and put these areas in and then do everything else but I've also got these little shapes here which are like little square corners perhaps not that big but you get the idea and then with these dips if I use a finer pen I've got a finer one here big and chunky for the outline then we can start to put these shapes in on this shell they come together in a point but me, I'm not drawing something that's realistic. I'm drawing an interpretation of what is there to suit my needs. And my needs often are that I want sections to put either colour or pattern or both in. And so that's exactly what I'm doing. And where I've got these little dips is where I'm drawing those sections in. Some of these sections are really tiny so if I when I come to draw this to draw you know to, to fill in like that I'd want to make these wider so I've got more space to work with. But this is just one shell out of an uncountable number of this kind of shells that exist today let alone throughout the whole of history. So I, I try not to get too hung up on reproducing exactly what I can see. I've done that in the past. It was part of my A-level course in my early 40s, or in my 40, was I 40, 40 something? And that's nearly 20 years ago now. And, um, but I, even then I started to stylize things. I can remember looking for that pattern, for that shape, the things that I can use. Okay, that's fairly simple you say, but what about these others? Well, we can do the same thing, we can start with the basic outside shape. Here's a sea urchin. 
So start with its outside shape. And then we've got this centre. And from the centre, we've got lines. On this, it's dots. But these dots are enclosed in other stripes. So let's draw some of these in. I'm not drawing them in exactly where they are because I'm already aware that I want to make sure I have enough space between them. If I'm going to be finickety and fussy about it, I'll actually make sure I've got a multiple of five. I haven't. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, that'd be odd, so we'll put eight in and leave it at that. But that's the basic idea of those. So there, these are the two easiest ones, I think. And then you've got this space for filling in with pattern. You can take inspiration from this particular one. Where perhaps I'm going to put some of these patterns in there. Yeah, some of these sections are going to have two of these dots in. Side by side, some it'll just be one one above the other because nothing here is entirely identical or perfect. And you'll see that when you look at nature. We think it's perfect but it's not. There are imperfections in it. That idea of perfectly imperfect. So that's the basis for that one. What about these? Well spirals are easy enough to do. I like to draw the spiral shell. Instead of doing the outline I'm looking at how this connects here but I'd actually start in the middle and draw a spiral that gradually gets broader and broader until I get there. And then if I look at this, I can see it curves to connect. And that's what I do. So if, if I leave, if I just pop these to one side a moment, and if I go to my sketchbook, I've got my big chunky one. I've got smaller versions of these shells there because I realised I'm going to need chunkingly big you know, sort of images for you to see. And to be honest with you, it's a lot easier to look at these on, um, on the screen. But let's start with this one. And I am going to start with, uh, let me just cap my pens before I manage to draw all over myself with them. I've got a pencil. And I drew on my image here with pen so you could see that image really clearly. And I'm just going to fold this so you, I can pop this beside me and you can see what I'm doing. I've forgotten to do that, pop the light on from the camera. Okay, let me just move this so we can get both things in view, hopefully. This is awkward. So... If I take this shape, we'll start with this kind of shape going on here. So I'm exaggerating a little bit the, the swoop of these, but it'll be fine because I then want to go, perhaps it won't be, but I can change the shape in pencil. I know I often draw straight in pen, but I've got a storehouse of how to draw things in my head. And here I'm just using the line, the pencil to refine that line. I'm then going to pop these little wings in. Ooh, so that tells me this needs to come out a bit more, I think. That'll be a bit better. And they do curve around like that. I'm going to pop that border in there, but I'm going to add my little sections in around the edge, like this. I'm going to pop, I think that'll be okay. So these actually connect at different spaces. So let me go back to my nice big chunky pen and do the outline of this. So I've drawn this shape without the indents, then I've popped those in with my pen or pencil. I've popped a double border there, which is where 
the lines from these are going to go and um, I'm not happy with the way that one the angle that one's coming out a bit too big perhaps that's a bit better and that one's a bit of a wonky one so you can make those adjustments with your pencil and then I'm just going to draw around this I'm going to go to that first notch I'm going to notch it notch it and here I'm not going to put a straight line in between them I'm going to curve it slightly perhaps exaggerating the curve that's between them a little bit because again I'm not trying to draw this as being realistic my style of art is quite stylized my style of art is quite stylized god Angela I really need to stop and think no I don't need to stop and think about what I'm going to say pop that band in and then I'm just going to turn my book so it's a bit easier for me to draw I'm going to take lines from these corners here down towards this line bearing in mind I need to curve them in this kind of way actually I've done it the opposite way too on the picture haven't I but again that's no great shakes that's what happens when I draw something it's what happens but that then has the feeling of being um, a cockle shell and it's quite stylized and I could pop another one in here without that little indent just to, just to split that larger space up okay so I'm going to go back to this because one thing I've learned through drawing this is that this is kind of triangular in shape but it's quite a broad triangle so we want quite a wide angle here and this area is quite deep as well so I'm going to draw this as a rounded triangle almost so I'm not going to close the bottom instead I'm going to close the bottom with almost a semicircle then perhaps if we try it this way I'm going to draw my lines in that I want to split this up and I know that where these meet is where I'm going to have my little scalloped edges like so so I'm sorry I'm off screen oh let me do that I'll do that one for you again I don't mind doing that if I do go that way I'm going to go off screen again so let's have a look so I'm drawing quite a broad triangle here and then I'm going to draw quite a deep kind of semicircle there and I can round that edge off as I come to it here's my center line so I'm going to draw those stripes in or the center of those stripes where I want them and I know this is where I'm going to pop my indents like that so this is another way of doing it sometimes I have to draw things a couple of times until I work out a way of doing it so let's have a look I'll link this one in I'm going to use this is an 08 pen so it's quite a broad pen I'm just going to go like that there. I'm also going to, am I going to put, yeah, I will put a double one in here, but I think I'll leave a bit more space at the bottom than I did in the original one because these lines were getting a bit crowded, crowded there. And I don't want them crowded really. So here is where 
I'm going to pop them down. I want them to come close together towards the centre of the line, the pencil line I've got there. Because that is something that I think that makes me happy here. So the reason for that is that as the shell, this distance gets wider, the space between them also gets wider. I'll show you what I mean now. Because I can see the original image, even if you can't. So can you see these get, you know, they actually close to a single point and they get gradually wider towards the outside edge. So I'm making, I'm mimicking that here, but it's not identical to that particular shell. And then I can pop my little wings on here. And I'm actually changing, I've changed one a little bit. I like this one. It's more of a, more of a triangular shape than, you know, uh, this one, it's distinctly a square, a corner of a square. This one's more the corner of a triangle, but quite a, you know, not a sharp one, but quite nice. I quite like that. And I will just pop lines in like that. Okay, let me have a look at this one here and let's see how this one will work out. I'm going to use a, again the, um, now with this one, as I'm drawing down this line I'm just swooping it up that little bit here, which I didn't do on this one or this one. But I am going to make sure I pop in these little notches. And I'm making them shallower than I've drawn. What I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to draw this semi-circle, this, this circular line in here. And I'm going to use that to draw these as a kind of triangular shape that you know it comes to a point so it's more like the original shell but without so many of these being there and then it is just a question of popping I've noticed I've been drawing these quite a quite a way down in comparison to the end. So let's have a look at how we can perhaps take this back to the original kind of thing. They're a bit small, but they'll do. And then this looks more like this one. The other thing that I can see in this particular shell, do I have another one that's like it? Yes, of course we do. is we've got all of these um, sort of like bands around, along, around them. So I can actually put those in. I can do that either with a pencil to begin with, if that's what makes me feel more comfortable, because I can then adjust those lines until I get them the way I'd like, perhaps. Perhaps that one's a bit sharp that one is as well so I can just adjust them and there's a couple of ways I can deal with this okay you could just draw them so they go through these lines which is what this one almost looks like it's doing but hopefully you can see on this one the darker line goes up here and down there. So this shape mirrors this, sh this shape here and this shape mirrors this one here. Yeah. So if I use that as the principle here, for these sections, this is going to bend upwards like so. And I am adjusting my line as I go to make me comfortable. And I am going to double 
this line because they are like stripes on the shell. So I'm doing every other one just to make sure that I get this quite correct. And then in between, they bend downwards this way. So if I do the first one, and then this one, this one, and then this way, like so, and like so. And then that gives the, the rippling that you get on a shell. The shadow will make sense of which are the higher points and which are the lower points. OK, we'll come back to that in a moment. So if I do the same here. So this one, this one will bend upwards, the wider sections. And again, I'm going to do a double line or double the line along here. And then here, again, I'm going to join these two lines up, but the curve is going to be in the opposite direction. So I am joining the pairs of lines together. Now I've got into the swing of things. I know I'm doing a double line. And so I can just keep on doing that there. And I'll do alternate ones because it I don't have to stop and think about what I'm doing. I only have to stop and think when it comes to adding the, the, the lines in between. And once I've worked that out, it's the same in each section like this. So that looks a lot more like this cockle shell, I suppose. Oops, let's do it that way round. Because you can see the the lines and the way that they, um, the bands of the lines and the colours here, and the way that they go. It's not so easy to see. Which one was it? It was easier to see on. None, none of them really. Well, that one perhaps. Where we can see we've got a double line here and then another one there. And so on. So that's another way of doing that. Um, I'm also quite happy to just put these lines in the bigger sections. It's paring the detail down to get to the essence of the shell and how I want it to appear. So with this one, I very much just want to keep it fairly simple and that would work for me to be honest and I think I might just pop a, a, a stripe there joining these little corners I'm not sure whether it works it looks like I've got some strange ca a cat dressed up as a strange ghost Put some eyes there and a little nose. Ghost cat. Yes, come on back to shells, Angela. I think it might be nice just to pop, perhaps, one right at the edge here. This is this has got a cleaner feel about it than this. I mean, they both work. It just depends how much detail you want. This is a very flat line here. If I was to draw this again, I'd want to arch it a bit more. Sketchbook though. With this one, ooh, let me just move my sketchbook around. I can add perhaps some of these lines in. It may be that I'm going to add the one that's around the outside edge and perhaps put a couple lower down, leaving a big section here. So I've got this space to fill in, but I've also got this space here that I can fill in in other ways. Hmm. Hmm. 
and just that carries those lines on down towards the tip but using a different pattern so these all seem to work i think they do what do you think it is just about looking at shapes okay let's have a look at the spiral one i've got the spiral one here let me just pop the others to one side because i will come back and add some shadow i'm not going to put any pattern in these sections you can you know, hopefully you you if you've been following me for a while or you've been following other zentangle um or tangle pattern or other artists who use pattern in their work you'll be able you'll have been able to you know if you've got enough confidence to add pattern i'm going to do this one and this is perhaps well, i love spirals but we're going to start with that circle in the middle and then we're going to draw a spiral around it but each time we go around we're just making the distance a little bit wider I haven't done as many spirals round because I realised I was going to get huge here. And that's okay because you get tiny little shells that have got fewer circles round because they're younger. They haven't grown as much. So that is the essence of this shell. The difference is we've got these lines spiralling here. And do you know what those lines remind me of? It's the Zentangle pattern diva dance, but I can also see these lines stop close to where it begins to get very narrow. I'm going to stop them when they get to around here. I don't want them to overlap with this particular part of the shell. So I'll start putting some diva dance in. Okay, let me move that and check that it's on the screen. And diva dance is all about having or a little wavy line and then putting some bumps or darker areas in however you want to do it there are different ways of doing it just to add some darkness but also it in it sort of like informs the next layer where you want to put the bumps. I tend to fill the hollows in. And if I if the line's getting too flat, I make the bump of the hollow a lot bigger to keep that waviness in. So I've got that, I've got a hollow here, so I'm going to add it's almost like there's a little little bead of ink gathered in a dip in a valley. And so on. But that, for me, this works for me. Again, I'm not about copying directly the shell, though I could do a drawing of it. I have done in the past. And I do I always used to enjoy drawing that way and I no doubt I would even now but I find the challenge of stylizing things perhaps of picking out the essence of an item and just keeping to that 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 essence and this is a valuable skill no matter what art you're doing I guess is it's about you could draw every leaf on a tree or you could draw the essence of the tree which is its shape and, and the stem and some of the, the branches there in a, a solid shape um, there are plenty of artists who do this and their work is absolutely stunning um, Iraville comes to mind who is one of my particular favourites and it's I-R-A-V-I-L-L-E And there is just something about this kind of way of working that just fills me with absolute delight and pleasure. It's not, it's not that it makes things a lot easier to do. I suppose in some ways it does when it comes to having a visual memory. 
because instead of mem oh the memory for things instead of memorizing what they look like and all the details and so on it's about the shapes and how you how the shapes go together and how you get those shapes to work with each other this is getting interesting now as i'm getting narrower and narrower this is looking more like a nautilus shell so this one here the next one round I've just made a, a dip here and that's what I'm going to work with from this point onwards just to keep this spiralling round. It's strange how this works. And I am finishing this with you because I know I'm going to thoroughly love what the end product of this is. I love that. It's not that I don't love these, but I love that. Before I do anything with these, I am going to do something with them. I said I was going to add shadow. But um, let me have a look. I've only, just, I've only spent half an hour. And a lot of that half an hour was talking. I might say a lot. A fair amount of it was. So I've got a needful eraser here, simply because it makes no dust. I prefer my soft plastic eraser because that will really get rid of all the lines and bits. I'm sure this will if I knew how to use it properly. Actually, it works fine. Like this. And I did, I did get out. I did. I've got an O1 here. And it would be quite nice to add pattern to these sections. And I know what pattern I want to add here. For some reason, it's for tweed. I just think that the tweed just fills these sections beautifully or the pattern just goes with the shell. And I am drawing this upside down to the way I usually would. So I'm starting in this corner and then drawing curved lines that follow that edge until they start curving. If I've got a big space until these start overlapping, I'm just going to go back and add lines in. And then it's a question of overlapping them side to side. So you get a lovely woven effect there. I think I could have put a, a, a line here to create that edge, that border here. I'll do this one very quickly. I'm so late getting myself into gear today. I had something to do yesterday that it was a very pleasant thing to do, but it involved being with people actually in person. And um, oh, stressed bunny. I didn't realize I don't realize how stressed I was. I knew I was getting stressed in the days before because I had a you know, a week to work myself up about it. Bear in mind that I've barely been with people physically or where there are people for well over two years. I've barely seen people in physical, you know, like real human beings as in physical form. And as lovely as it was, as I was driving home, I could, I what happens, I become very spaced out. I find it the world looks different because my my vision, I'm like a startled rabbit caught on the headlights, even more so. And just the tiredness that overcomes me and overwhelms me. Um, I just couldn't wait to get to bed last night, but I knew if I went too soon, I'd just be tossing and turning because I was still too wound up to sleep. So I did get to sleep, but I woke up a bit too early. And I kept nodding off. I just couldn't get out of bed. I kept nodding off for half an hour, 10 minutes, waking up, thinking, OK, 
thinking, oh, I'll go back to sleep and not being able to settle. So it's going to be a strange old day for me with my time messed up and everything. But doing some drawing like this, hopefully what I'm saying makes sense. But this just adds, I just think it just adds so much loveliness to the shell. Now, if I'd drawn the shell as it was realistically, I'd have no space for these patterns going in. None whatsoever. So I'll do more of these if it's something that you would like to see. Just drop a comment. It's like anything, if there's anything you particularly would like to see, just leave me a comment. And if it's something I feel I'd like to do, or like to do at some point in time in the future, I will certainly take it on board. Because the channel isn't just, it is mine, it is for me to do things with to decide what I do and you know so on but each of you knows best what you might need to help you progress with your arty journey things you'd like to see or the approaches I take to doing this don't know if that makes sense I hope it does so just leave a comment and if it's something I can do or would consider doing either sooner or later, depending on what preparation I have to do. Today it took me a while and I got very vexed with my paper trimmer as I was trimming the pages down. Because I had to print these out as big as I could compared to A4. But I still had a lot of paper I could get rid of. So they, they were small enough that you could see them on here. I kid you not. What am I going to do with these images afterwards, you may be thinking. Well, this is what sketchbooks are for because I will trim the pages down and I will pop them in my sketchbook because I'll have them there as a reference for future work as well. But not until I've finished with them if I'm going to continue doing shells and how to deconstruct. As somebody said, how do you do these step by step? Deconstruction is a very Zentangle term. Sometimes I think I must sound very dismissive of Zentangle. I'm not. It's a method, it's a way of working, and it's a way that many people find a lot of pleasure in. And it's something that I like, but I particularly like the patterns. And I like to use the patterns in my own kind of way. So there's a bit of perk. I think I've done those the wrong way round, but hey ho. It's, you know, this is, it's fine. It's the sketchbook. Perhaps not, perhaps it's just me. And I think in this one I might just do the tweed but go the usual way, like this. I think that'll work. So yeah, so I'm a bit shattered today and it's going to be a very quiet day for me doing quiet art, trying not to fall asleep otherwise I won't sleep tonight and just mess that section up and it happens it's just you leave it and unless somebody's highly observant and finickety they won't even notice. I've learnt this over time as well with art is that sometimes people don't even notice the imperfections that you do in your own work I'm aware of things that I thought, oh no, I, I messed up there, yet nobody else sees it. Or if they do, they're too polite to mention, never quite sure which. But often it's not, unless you, unless you point things out to somebody, they won't even notice it.
you notice every imperfection in the things that you do. But as I, I've said often enough, I'm sure, we're not aiming for perfection, especially not in a sketchbook, but even with art. Never think we can be per um, I say we can be perfect. I mean, there are amazing artists who've done, who do such realistic paintings and drawings. It's amazing. I think that's wonderful. And I admire their skill, their talent, their ability to do this. And I think, I do think that anybody with the right kind of training and way of doing things could develop those skills in, in, to one degree or another. And I've been there, done it, you know, I've sketched things that really look like the things, the, the tone and, and so on. But I get so much more pleasure out of drawing this and so much more satisfaction. This is this is me. This is how I want to express myself in the world. And often things like this will be turned into colouring pages, which will then give other people pleasure who don't have that confidence to draw for themselves or don't have the desire to, but just enjoy the pleasure of using colour and that, that innocence that it brings in many ways. So it's creativity no matter what. And I'm somebody who gets really a bit annoyed <laughs> about having to colour in at times. Okay, last thing before we wrap up, I have here something in my eye, other than my eyeball have a look oh which one shall i use i've got derwent graphics why can't i see is that the one yeah i've got the pit matte graphite which i prefer this is a 6b and i've said that adding shadow is what makes all the difference to these sections so i'm going to shadow inside these areas do you know this isn't my favorite medium to add shadow with i'm not a fan of pencils generally um they have for sketching not a problem for this i prefer to use my alcohol markers but i know they'll just bleed straight through and feather and fan out on this paper I'm trying to keep the darkest areas to the edges but I still want that inner bit there shadowed because I want these to sink backwards because they are below the other areas okay you also need to add shadow around the edge because that is where It would be further away than the top. Now I could look at the photograph to get an idea of this, but the photograph I was using has been um, done in a very flat light. So I'm here thinking about where these shadows would be and not worrying too much if they are completely accurate or not. It's giving it's giving that um, suggestion of shadow and of dimensionality. And as I've said, I'm not too worried about whether this is realistic or not. It's just adding that shadow in to bring this to life. Now, along these edges here, there would be a, quite a bit of shadow. And again, shadow along the outside edge. Now, this is going to be a challenge. So I do want to smooth out those and just get a little bit of shadow around the edge. I also want to put some shadow, I think, underneath these se this section here and perhaps into this section as if this outer la these layers are perhaps a little bit higher up than the others. That might lead to shadowing elsewhere. Let's just have a look at this. I've got the thinnest paper stump in the world here. But it was to hand, so it will it'll work, it does its job. So I'm making sure of that. Okay, and then... Let's 
it's hard to see but yeah that gives that gives a fair amount of dimension if I was thinking of a light source my light source would be coming from this direction so the bits that would be in shadow in more shadow would be this side this side because the light would hit the other side so light going this way it would miss this and hit here so this area would be in shadow more shadow so I can go back and add that it would hit this side so this would be in more shadow as well and this one and that's just I've missed a bit in places I've got an eraser so I can go back and erase where I've overspilled the lines a bit. That's the one advantage of this, if I did that with an alcohol marker, it would be colourless blender and a, a bit of a freak out. And I will just blend the edge just a little bit, not too much, just a bit, just to spread that darkness and also to work this into the paper. Now that's really got the domain, you know, that's that high contrast. This is a good thing for me to do because with my last video, with the letter I that I added shadow to, the, the contrast is quite subtle. Whereas here I'm going, okay, I can see that I needed more contrast. And so something I need to take back with alcohol markers, I think. So we've got that and that's working just nicely. I'll do one section of this and then I'm going to call it a day because I am going to add shadow on either side of these sections because so I want them to feel that they are doming up a little bit and I could do, let me try that on this as well, just very lightly add some shadow on either side here and keep that centre clear for a highlight. That really does make these look a little bit more curved, doesn't it? So let me just do that. The worst thing that happens is that before you blend this in, you have an opportunity to erase with a pencil all of it but you can still erase a lot of that shadow even once you've used the paper stump or tortillon to work the graphite in the nice thing about these as well is that you can use other media on top of the graphite colored media so i could use um, watercolour pencils or watercolours or you know the um, brush pens or soluble ones to add some colour to this if I wanted to. That's actually really high contrast. Works okay. All right um, I've done some shading around the edges here so let's have a look at that. Especially with these perks because that really does help to bring them you know gives them some volume quite simply just by doing that I think I may need to add a bit more graphite here because again it's that idea that these are bending upwards so I want the darkest shadows towards the edges so I'm just smoothing it out a little bit towards the centre, but not much. And those perks are particularly grey in the middle. And here I'm just going to use my eraser just to pick up some of the stray grey that's gone down there. So that really does bring these, that's really worked. Let me try this kind of shading where it's really dark on this side and not so dark on the other. 
just to put some depth in, into this. Side as well, because this would then be really quite dark in comparison. The 6B pencil allows me to do this. Um, in case you aren't aware, the higher the number with B, the darker the lead is, the softer it is as well. So if this is a 6B is a lot easier to blend out than say a 2B. But the, um, you know, everything ends up a little bit too black if you're not careful. Like here. I can just go back and just lift some of it up with that immutable eraser. And there we are, we're beginning to get some dimension going on. I'll just do... So I keep saying I'm going to finish and then I keep going back and saying I'm just going to do this. That's because... I need to do a couple either side just for comparison. One thing I like about Zentangle is the way they, one of the things I like about Zentangle, I should say, it's not the only thing, is the way they talk about adding shadow as if it's part of the pattern. So rather than working with light sources and um, in that kind of way, which can be complicated and confusing for people. And I'm aware of that. I try to explain how I think about lighting and how light would be shadowed and not shadowed. And I find it quite easy to do. Perhaps it's my scientific background or just my observational, the way I observe things. So we've got that there and... Um, Compared to the other sections, you can see how that has simply brought out dimension. Adding colour would also help to separate these sections out. So a darker colour in these sections compared to a lighter colour for the, for the upper sections would work nicely as well. So that's something to consider. Um, the last one, I will add some shadow to this. Where this overlaps around the outside of the curve here. I'm going all the way around. It's not something I would do if I was paying attention to um, where the direction of light is. I'm just creating shadows around this shell. And I do want some around the outside edge as well. So I want to have that falling away and I want a highlight in the middle. So a little bit here. Oops, a bit too thick there, but it'll be fine. And let's see if this will let me do this nicely. We'll see. You can see I'm going to need to use the eraser in the middle there, but that's fine. I don't know why this edge is, is hard and sticky. I'll go back to the other one. I wanted to use the cleaner point so that I didn't add too much graphite, too much extra graphite, but for some reason need, they're both really scratchy. I think it's because the amount of ink on here, it's, they're catching on the ink. And they're tearing that ink up as well. So this isn't the best paper for doing this on. Where I need to intensify my highlights. I'll use this or I could dig out the very fine, I've got a Tombow Mono eraser, which is a stupidly thin eraser, but it would be great for some of those sections. But that's brought this to life. So we've gone from these to this. I hope that helps in how I break things down, the way I think about things. Um, 
sometimes I have to make a decision whether I'm going to start with the outline or whether I'm going to start with the basic structure. So with this one, it's definitely the spiral is where to start. These is that outside structure is focusing on the outside shape and what it is and stopping and thinking about what that shape reminds you of. You know, down to here, it's a triangle. And then below that, we've got a semicircle or an arc, an arch, a curve going on there. So we draw that shape first and then connect with a curve. Then the rest of it is, it's looking back at the image and seeing, okay, what are the important features here? For me, for this particular shell, it was these little dips and the double lines that come away from them. I wanted to mimic that, which I've done in both. With this one, I've put that distinct line in, like I did here, for these lines to stop at. And then I can do something with this lower section here. I let them go down. I drew a pencil line in where they'd stop, but then I decided to put a band slightly back from their tips and to extend these with dots rather than a solid line and with some space at the end. So it's just looking at things. Oh, the other thing is to notice the way that lines, if you're going to add lines, how they would bend. It's looking at the image and working and thinking, I'm just going to look at one section. It's not the best example I've got here, is it? Which one was the best one here? So I'm going to look at this and I'm going to see that these, these bands, these coloured bands, here if I follow them I can see they bend in the same way the outside edge does. But in the dip they bend in the opposite direction just as this outside edge does. So I need to make sure I make those variations when I draw them and it and I don't need to copy everything exactly if I was making a, a you know, sort of like scientific illustration then yeah even then there's some stylization goes on you don't completely well I, I, some people do but there's no need to completely um, copy everything it's giving people the main features this is where I go back to my scientific background is looking for those main features and leaving out what isn't important. But, you know, it's enough information there for people to identify what something is, but not so much that it overwhelms the image or makes the image complicated. And that's what stylized drawing to me is all about. Except then I go and add the complication back in, don't I, with pattern. It's a different use. It's it's giving the skeleton in which I can do other things. I could just add colour to this. And we've done this. Well, I've done this in previous videos often, where I use colour to add shadow and highlight and bring this to life. It's just line art. Here, I've just used some shadowing to do the same in here. And this one, I've used it as a, I suppose, a, a really complicated zentangle string to add pattern and so on to that's something else that can be done. Start with looking for what is the simplest way or the simplest part of an object to draw it. Here it was the outside shape, here it was that spiral. And these little wings, when you look at it you can see they, look here, they're, they're separate to this main inner shape. They go underneath so let's start with what's on top. They look like they're underneath, and they are, because this goes under a bit. And um, concentrate on that shape. Same here, what shape is this? Oh, it's actually basically a wobbly circle. And we've got lines radiating out from the centre. Oh, they're double lines. And where they, where they hit the edge, we've got zigzags like this. So draw that basic circle in and then go around and add the zigzags on. Doesn't matter if they're not even in size because they aren't, or evenly spaced because they aren't. Look, there's one big one there and next door there's one that's barely got a little pointy, pointy bit on it. And there's quite a big distance here, but then these others are really squashed in together. It doesn't matter. Once you've worked out that you've got these V shapes, you've got this central point, and they all tie up to that central point. 
then you just draw them in and then we'll ink in ink them in like this and then erase the pencil like so and just keep going and it will end up looking like this if you want to get a bit more complicated you can see how some of these lines are bending they're sort of like bending in a in a circular way all the way around so if i put some more of these in so these are curving in the same direction all the way around and that curvature gives you an added feeling that this is this i go back and fill the bits in but this has some dimension to it as well and if i go back and look even more clearly i can see that with these curved lines it starts off fairly there's another curve at the top but this creates an interesting pattern that could be a seashell so i'm not going to worry too much look at that smiley face with pointy teeth or smiley mouth what can i say my mind is thinking about things in a different way this we've done i did mussel shells a while back and again it's it's kind of a teardrop shape but instead of the teardrop being Instead of the teardrop being this shape, this bit at the top is bent round a fair amount, a bit like that. It's a bit pointier than I've drawn it. I've drawn mine. But then we have all of these, oops, so I do them the wrong way round. These shapes, lines that come around like this, up to the end, and perhaps a bit more curved like this so you can see that kind of thing going on this one I'd start actually with the outside edge I wouldn't worry about all the extra lines or anything just put this in as a basically a this kind of shape like so or We could draw it like that as the basic shape. This one, they are they go at a roughly di diagonal, and then we can pop the sections in like that, using the guidelines to help us keep this going in the same kind of shape like that. And then we can go back and add all of the details with a finer line or finer pencil and at the end here we've got something that goes around like this and back a bit like that and so on so it is it it's just taking it one step at a time and just trying to look at the lines and the direction they go. Trace it with your pencil, get a feeling for how these lines curve, and they do curve. Like so. It's almost like they're S shapes and they curve over upwards towards the top at the edge and perhaps downwards and meet there to give these little ridges that are in here. There's loads of ways of, of approaching it, but it is just thinking about where can I start? What would be the easiest thing for me to draw? To draw each one of these accurately, or so it looks like this would be awkward, but to draw this lumpy bumpy outside or just taking this basic kind of triangle, triangular shape and fitting these lumps and bumps in a consistent way within, putting perhaps these lines in first and then connecting them in this way or drawing them in either way will work but it is just taking it and breaking it down into the simple shapes starting with an outline which you can start with and as a build a place to build from 
I'll do more if you want. OK, <laughs> I will do. And um, talk about other things at some time. So this is over an hour long. <laughs> Didn't want it to be this long, but it is. So I'm going to say to you all, enjoy the rest of your day. Look after yourselves until you come back here again. Thank you if you've subscribed. If you haven't subscribed, please do. It is free. It doesn't cost you anything, only a tiny little of energy to click your mouse or your finger on that subscribe button. Like the video if you've enjoyed it and leave a comment, especially if you've got any requests for things that I could show you because I'm happy to work with you and for what you would need. So take care, look after yourselves and I'll see you soon.